Charlotte County's diverse natural habitats are alive with animals of all shapes and sizes, including some that might surprise you. Lions, tigers, and bears are but a few of the animals that inhabit the Octagon Wildlife Sanctuary in Punta Gorda. While it is open to the public, it's not a zoo. Established in the 1970s to rescue and rehabilitate abandoned and abused exotic animals, it is a retirement and nursing home. Residents here live a nurtured and peaceful existence, thanks to director Lori Carone and her dedicated staff of volunteers and supporters. Now, Lori, we're here with Bremi, and we were fortunate enough not too long ago to help you all move her to this new enclosure. Now, I remember you telling us that she was brought here with her brother after their previous owner got sick. Yeah, and, and sometimes people don't realize when siblings come in, they tend to get a little aggressive with one another, and then you have to make that decision to separate them. You know, they, they tend to adjust very well with that, you know, and have no problem. That's funny because when we got her in here, it wasn't only but a couple minutes and she was in her pool and, you know, and then we, were, we had the pleasure of feeding her. And so, I mean, she seems like she's adapting uh, really well. Yeah, she really is having a good time. Now, at any given time, how many animals would you have here? I've been trying to count as I go around, but how many do you have here on site? Generally around 150, and that's including birds that we get in and also our goats. And we have all our big cats, our, our bears, our Monkeys, uh, lions. Hyenas. Exactly. <laughs> it can change at any moment. How important is it to have the public come out and have their support here? It's very important. I mean, the support is overwhelming. There's some really amazing people we have met. If it wasn't for them, I mean, this place probably wouldn't exist. At times, I have to say, it is hard to be open to the public because you get a lot that don't understand what we are truly about. And that's the hard thing, is to educate them properly, what, their understanding of what we do out here. We read the mission statement of the Octagon. In part, it says to provide a recovery and a living environment for abandoned and abused exotic wildlife species. The recovery part of that really struck us because animals come here with different physical and mental issues from their, from their previous owners. What are some of the things that you see when, when animals arrive here, when they're fortunate enough to arrive here? I appreciate that. Every single animal out here has a story, whether they have been uh, not given the proper nutrition when they were younger, and then they get here and it's up to us to try to catch up. We have a tiger that was given a bottle for the first part of his life. They did not provide him the proper protein that he needed to grow. Mm. And so his bone structures are out of balance. His digestion is out of balance. So he has a very special diet. We have animals that if you even walk past with a rake and shovel, which we do around here where we're cleaning, and a lot of times they will panic and hide and get into a corner you are trying to show them that they're not going to be hit with those. So this is almost like in, in humans you hear the term PTSD, post-traumatic yes. stress disorder. Why wouldn't an animal experience the same triggers yeah. and memories from bad experiences before arriving here? Absolutely, and they all have it. And it's just wow. a matter of adjusting every single animal to whatever their needs are. Just like, you know, um, you have some that have eye issues, you have some, again, that have hearing issues. Mm -hmm. Mainly a lot of them have teeth issues. So, you know, you have to adjust to make whatever it is you can do for them to make it comfortable. And then they're not nervous or right. agitated. You don't get any state or federal funding at all, right? right? It's all strictly donations, what you get. Everything is donations. Generally, it runs us anywhere from eight 8,000 to 10,000 a month, and that's food, that's medical food, supplies, medical. Uh, veterinary care, obviously, uh, just uh, all around operational expenses. When it comes down to it, that's what it takes. Can you just speak to some of your uh, supporters and organizations that really help you keep this going? Oh my gosh, I, and again, if, if, it, if it wasn't for them, hey, baby. This, this, I, I mean, they have been a blessing to us, all these organizations. We have Harry Chapin Food Bank that have been delivering meat out to us every week for probably 15 plus years. Wow. Last year, we were told we fed out 93,000 pounds of food out wow. of meat alone. Just meat. Yeah, just meat alone in one year. And, uh, you know, we get our produce from Target. That's all food that's not human consumable. So Cheney Brothers has been donating uh, for about a year or two now. And then we have Winn-Dixie off of Bayshore in North Fort Myers that's been donating every day uh, for probably 25 years wow. or so. Lori, the founder of the Octagon, Pete Caron, your late husband. Yeah. What do you think inspired him to start all this? 
Ah, uh, wow. Pete was always involved with animals one way or another, whether it be working on a farm. There was a place in northern Florida that actually had exotic animals that he learned a lot from as well. He said, you know what, wow. there's a need for this, so let's go that direction and help animals. And you found this place and became a volunteer, and that's yeah. how you discovered the yeah. octagon and met Pete, is that right? Right, exactly. Uh, back about 27 years ago, as a matter of fact. I stepped in through the front wow. gates and I never looked back. Now, it doesn't take you long when you're walking around here. I mean, right there in eye shot, right here in eye shot, you're volunteers. Ugh. Just how important are they to keeping this place together and up and running? Oh my gosh, I tell you, they, again, a blessing because you figure a lot of our volunteers all have full time jobs. Most of them are going to school and they have families to get home to as well. So a lot of my volunteers have been with me 10, 15, 20, wow. 25 years. That's and temptation. Yeah, it really is. And this place wouldn't exist without their dedication. They're not doing it for anything other than these animals. Do you find yourself getting emotionally attached to these animals? Is this something that you maybe try to avoid or, or is it just impossible to do that? You try. You get that attachment when you've taken care of them sure. so long that there's that connection you have with yeah. them. But then I try to put up these walls too that I have to because when it comes time to making that decision, that's the worst part of my job here. And I was, when you finally came, talk to your vet and say, okay, we got, it's time. And then, then we have to euthanize. You don't talk for a couple of days afterward. It just, it eats you up inside, you know, but then you, the other part is saying, okay, it's opening up another place for another animal that might need your help. It's kind of ironic when you think about it because it's all about quality of life. That's what this place is all about. Exactly. The quality of their life. And when it comes to that point, that's probably one of the most important quality of life decisions that you can make. Absolutely. Albeit a tough one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had some heartbreaking times where, you know, it just, you don't get over it. No, you don't. That's what makes it real, what you do. My family doesn't understand it, but, <laughs> but it's okay. But you do. My octagon does, yeah, my octagon family does, you know. You just have to wonder, and so I want to ask, what is it that keeps you going? The volunteers and how much this place means to them and the care that they provide. Sometimes it's families to see them, how much they enjoy this place and they get so much out of it. And that just gives you that extra boost with the animals, you know, by far. It's just walking out and walking around and the animals recognizing you and giving you that peace, mm. that look of peace saying, you know, their way of saying thank you for taking the chance and putting everything you can into keeping us going. And you know, you just, you sense it about them and they just, yeah, it's the animals. To view full episodes, visit adventureandwildlife.com.